G'day guys and gal, doing setting comparisons is always fun, and with Halo being the game series I grew up on and Warhammer being Warhammer, it's awesome that I can bring the two together for a video. However, unlike a normie video, like could Halo beat Warhammer 40k, spoiler Halo would get stunked without a second thought, like it wouldn't even be close, I thought let's get a bit more realistic and compare the Covenant to the Tau. Both are confederations of alien species working together towards a common goal, both wage war against humanity, both are more technologically advanced than humanity, and both have way too much rule 34. But who would win if the two factions fought? Who has the greater warriors, more warriors, deadlier weapons, and so on? It's an interesting question that I intend to answer. Before we get started, I'ma let you in a bit of a life hack. The more time you can save on essential but tedious tasks, like cooking or preparing food, the more time you can spend painting Warhammer, or gymming, or watching anime. To this end, I have once again partnered up with Factor for this video. Factor is a service that sends you a box every week full of high protein, yet extremely delicious microwave meals like the kind of meals a bodybuilder would have to have to stack on muscle. Just pop them in a microwave and bam, even the cleanup is fast. The advantage Factor has over the other microwave meal brands is that the meals are never frozen, so they keep fresh, but also they send you new meals every week, so you never get sick of having the same ones. You can even pick which meals you want and how many you want. So if you just wanted a couple to top you up each week, or if you wanted to live off them, or if you wanted to get enough for your family, you can literally do whatever you want. What is the catch? There literally is none. I've just handed you a gold mine for improving your health and saving your time and your money by as using my link or QR code on screen or code MAJORMAY50, you'll get 50% off your first box as well as 20% off your following month's boxes. So with a discount like that, there's no reason not to try it. And if you don't like it, then you just cancel it any time. Every sign up supports the channel massively. Cheers to Factor for sponsoring this video. Today we'll compare and contrast the Covenant from Halo with the Tau from Warhammer 40k to see which alien gangbang fucks the hardest. We'll also pit them in a hypothetical war to see what would happen. I want to note, I'll be comparing the Covenant at their absolute peak power prior to the Flood, the Banished, or even their war against humanity. Uh, let's get into it. The best way to go about this is to break it down into sections and then compare them one by one. So first, starting us off with the quality of each faction's warriors. A massive strength for the Covenant is their huge variety of warriors, making them extremely difficult to adapt to. They have grunts and shield jackals as fodder, backed up by hardy elites, brutes, and the devastating hunters. On top of that, they then have their jackal snipers, Yanmei flying bugs for aerial skirmishing, amongst many others. Not to mention their prophets and other support troops. The Tau, on the other hand, despite having dozens of alien species in their empire, pretty much solely rely on themselves for combat, with the occasional use of human and crude auxiliaries. Now this doesn't make the Tau one-dimensional, they have their battle suits after all, but the Covenant definitely have way more warrior diversity. In terms of their quality, a Tau fire warrior would be superior to a grunt or even a jackal shield warrior, but a Covenant elite would fuck up a Tau fire warrior. They are just significantly stronger and faster than a human, with their warrior culture making them supremely powerful units. An energy sword would slice through a fire warrior like a 9000 degree knife through a fire year old. Not to mention the Tau suck even more shit at melee than a human, so an elite going invisible then appearing amongst the Tau lines with an energy sword would slaughter the shit out of them. Now the Tau battle suits definitely level the playing field here, but the elites are a rank and file soldier whilst the battle suits are an expensive specialty unit. I do also believe that hunters would be able to destroy battle suits with their assault cannons as well as the fact that their shields weigh two tons and are designed to be immune to plasma or ballistic weaponry. A hunter would easily crush a battle suit with a single hit. Now if we start looking at vehicles it gets even spicier. The Covenant have some cool shit, wraiths, banshees, ghosts, phantoms, but the Tau have railguns, and railguns are overpowered as shit. A single shot of a Tau railgun would destroy most Covenant tanks or ships. And whilst the Covenant Scarab is a beast of a machine, especially the mega-sized versions, the Tau would find taking them out to be pretty easy. They would quickly identify its weakness, that being the core of it, after a few engagements, and would simply just send five or so battle suits to jump at it and land directly near the weak spot. Then while most of them engage the Scarab's crew, one or two would take out the core in no time. As for Tau super units, the Manta is a beast and some of their battle suits are huge, like the Supremacy Armor. I can't really imagine many things in the Covenant ground forces that could take out a Manta or Supremacy Armor. They would need to orbitally laser strike these targets to take them out reliably. Speaking of orbital, how does the Covenant fleets match up to the Tau's? I'm not a sci-fi spaceship engineer, so I'm not going to fucking count gun ports or the kilowatt of each faction's energy shields or whatever. I'm just a caveman, so I'll look at raw firepower and ship size. 
A Covenant capital ship is generally about 5 kilometers long and features a titload of laser beams of all different varieties, including their Infernus pattern super heavy excavation beams, which is what they use to glass planets. But they also have many orbital weapons and lasers capable of tearing through ships' armor without issue. These capital ships are supported by battle cruisers that are about 1.8 kilometers long. There is a ton more support ships, but these battle cruisers are the most common right hand man to the capital ships. The Tau probably have the smallest ships in all of Warhammer 40k, mostly because they didn't need big ships until they encountered the Imperium and also their tactics don't revolve around 1700s golden age of pirate era shit. They are all about long range skirmishing, maneuverability and under no circumstances do they fucking ram other spaceships. It's hard to find exact tower ship sizing but from what I've read the 5 kilometer mark actually suits them pretty well also with many many smaller support craft to back them up. I do believe they also have a few giga ships that get up to about 10 kilometers but don't quote me on that. The tower generally just don't really get into those dick measuring contests. They don't see a purpose of building a giga leviathan ship because it'll be slow and a big target. They would rather just swarm you. During the Horus Heresy, capital ships were a big thing. Each fleet would specifically target the other's hero ships to win the battle. The Tau don't have that weakness. However, this does mean that they often get fucked by space marine ships due to the aggressive nature of those ships countering the more careful Tau tactics. I do also need to mention the Covenant Supercarrier, which measures 30 kilometers long, which is yeah, fucking big, much larger than anything the Tau would have. A space battle between the Tau and the Covenant would be a shitload of long range lasers ripping into each other whilst thousands of attack craft are launched. The Covenant would also attempt numerous boarding actions against the Tau ships. I do also need to talk about each faction's faster than light tech. Even though apparently the Tau can now warp jump sort of, I think it's a bit sketchy so let's just refer to their short range warp skimming. The Tau Empire is small mostly because they struggle to travel very far at any sort of real speed. Their faster than light is shit because they don't have navigators and their tech isn't as good as the Necrons yet. As such, the Tau using their faster than light to surprise the enemy and emerge at their flank in a space battle is unheard of. Compare this to the Covenant who use slip space tech which actually does work in a similar way to warp travel, i.e. tearing a hole into a different dimension and flying through it. But that dimension isn't hell and it isn't full of demons and shit, so slip space is generally faster and safer than warp travel whilst also being more accurate. For example, the UNSC Infinity was able to slipstream directly into the flank of a Covenant ship and destroy it via ramming, and UNSC slipstream tech is below that of the Covenant, so in terms of faster than light travel, the Covenant would definitely have a clear advantage. Let's now check out the technology level on the two sides. The Tau and Covenant are actually quite similar with their love of energy based weaponry over the ballistic weaponry that humanity in both their settings employ. They both have laser guns, plasma weapons and whatnot. The Covenant have a few wild cards like their needle attack creating focused micro explosions and their plasma pistols being able to EMP machines for a short moment, but then again so do the Tau who have ion weaponry and even employ the use of flamethrowers on occasion. The elite's energy shielding would give them a huge advantage in a fight against the Tau, allowing them to close the gap and get into melee, with the Covenant's long range firepower also being pretty decent in the form of jackal snipers as well as wraiths being mobile mortars. I would say overall though that the Tau have better long range options with the Covenant favouring mid to short range. However the elephant in the room is the Tau battlesuits. These battlesuits can go toe to toe with space marines who are even more powerful than the Spartans from Halo, and whilst an energy sword would dice them up nicely, they are just way more powerful in general. If a large force of Tau battlesuits came in and flanked a Covenant force, that force would be screwed. Sure, hunters good fuck up battlesuits pretty nicely, but hunters are rare and come in packs of two. Battlesuits can attack in their dozens or even hundreds. The Covenant would need to have elite zealots or stealth teams in reserve, ready to charge out with energy swords and close the gap with the battlesuits as soon as they would engage. So overall, their tech level is pretty similar. The Covenant have a few things the town don't, and the town have a few things the Covenant doesn't, notably battlesuits, but overall I'd say it's pretty close. Everything I've spoken about so far is pretty irrelevant though compared to my next point. What is the scale of the Covenant Empire versus the scale of the Tau Empire, which is bigger? Who has more ships? Who has more warriors? At its peak, the Covenant Empire was massive. The law states that it controlled the majority of the Orion Arm, which includes thousands of star systems. However, in saying that, its warrior castes, mostly the elites and brutes, barely had any other worlds outside of their homeworlds, so their numbers weren't insanely high. The elites because they were like feudal samurai, and the brutes because they were retarded. The Covenant also had thousands upon thousands of ships, although in war it would only deploy a few hundred at most. To take out Reach, the Covenant deployed 314 cruiser class or above ships, the largest single force humanity had ever seen, with the high charity defense fleet being 500 ships in total. These fleets are absolutely massive, but they do also make up the bulk of the Covenant's focused fleets. Like sure, they have a a thousand more, but they were spread out into patrols or escorts or defense or just anything like that. As for their military, the Covenant was actually quite underpopulated for how much of the galaxy they controlled. They didn't breed crazy fast like humans did, with numbers
numbers estimating to be in the hundreds of billions. This is why they weren't able to just steamroll humanity who had around 40 billion humans when they first encountered the Covenant. They just didn't have the numbers to zerg rush humanity until the war was won. Let's compare this to the Tau Empire, who control around 100 or so worlds clustered amongst a small area of the galaxy. You might instantly think the Tau are fucked here, but it's not that simple. They breed quite quickly, with each Tau world having billions of Tau on it. So in terms of raw population, they actually match or are not too far off matching the Covenant. Not to mention Tau society is extremely efficient. When a Tau world is attacked, there isn't mass panic. The warriors come forth and the civilians get out of the way. To put it simply, though the population scale of both factions is actually quite similar, the Tau have less worlds, but they are closer together, whereas the Covenant Empire is more scattered, so they have a harder time concentrating their forces. To be honest, when I started making this video, I thought the Tau would be a clear winner in all categories due to 40k being 40k, but seeing them match the Covenant so closely in a lot of ways was super interesting. So let's now pit them in a hypothetical war to decide who comes out on top. Let's say the two faction empires encounter each other. The Prophets think the Tau are cringe, so they declare them abominations, and the Tau can't vibe with the Covenant's extreme religious fundamentalism, already having learnt that lesson the hard way from dealing with humanity. The Covenant, being the more aggressive of the two, would attack hard and fast with extreme prejudice, a fleet of 300 ships rapidly attacking Tau space using their advanced slip space technology. The initial Tau fleets would be overwhelmed and taken out, as a number of Tau worlds would be invaded, cleansed, then glassed. The Covenant would be impressed with the Tau's tenacity, these outer worlds killing many Covenant warriors in their hastily pulled together defenses, with the battle suits standing out as primary targets. However, here is where the deciding factor emerges. As the Covenant pushes onto the next Tau worlds, they would use the same tactics, shock and awe, elite kill squads, hunter packs, grunt cannon fodder, orbitable superiority, just going balls to the walls. Meanwhile, the Tau would be constantly adapting. The Covenant is a religious fundamental empire. They do not adapt very quickly. When humanity brought out the Spartans, the Covenant didn't create a countermeasure. They just tried to throw their elite zealots at them, which they would have done anyway. The Tau, however, would adapt. They would equip their battle suits and fire warriors with vision goggles that would unmask elite camouflage. They would update their shielding and armor to be resistant to the plasma pistol EMPing their battle suits. They would employ more fire units to incinerate the hunter packs. They would keep stealth suits in reserve for Covenant scarabs. The Tau ships are also faster than Covenant ships, hence there would be a lot of hit and run tactics, with heroes like Shadow Sun leading boarding actions against the Covenant capital ships. Slowly, the tide of the war would turn as billions upon billions of Tau converged together against the brute force Covenant fleet. The Covenant would also bring in more reinforcements, but their ships would mostly come in ones or small groups from across their empire, not as a large unified force. The Tau's adaptability would be too much, and by the fifth or 6th Tau world, they would halt the Covenant advance and either destroy it or push it back. The war would be hectic and awesome, especially when elite zealots or brute chieftains would get amongst the Tau fire warriors in melee and just slaughter them. But it just wouldn't be enough. Put it like this, the UNSC, a pretty weak-ass human empire compared to the Imperium of Man, was able to resist the Covenant and eventually win the war. The Tau on the other hand have managed to hold back massive Imperial invasions that include Titans, thousands of Space Marines, and millions of soldiers, not to mention Psykers. If you threw those Imperials at the Covenant instead, they would crumble. The Master Chief was almost able to solo the Covenant. Imagine the thousand Master Chiefs that are even more powerful getting involved. The Covenant is extremely awesome and surprisingly would give a much bigger fight to the Tau than you would think. But the Tau Empire's adaptability, unity, and battle suits, not to mention they can hold their own against factions much more powerful than the Covenant, would be too much for the Covenant. But fuck man, I would love to see the Sangheili join the Tau. Shit would be dope. New major mini idea perhaps. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then subscribe. We're gunning hard for 600k and I need all the help I can get. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.